Greetings in the Lord Jesus, the Alpha, the Omega, the Bread of Life. It's a new setting. It's different today. I'm so used to sitting behind my desk and the bookshelf behind me. Uh, it's more of an intimate feeling. Uh, you know, it's almost like a, it's not a fireplace chat, but it feels like I was able to come into your living room or in your car, you know, there with you, or you might be a, a mechanic, you know, listening to me as, as you work on cars, I don't know. Uh, but there's so many different ways. But I am grateful and I am humbled to be with you um, as I do welcome in to the Wisdom Warriors and the Brilliance and our um, so many of the intercessors uh, across the nation, across uh, the world. Uh, we thank you, we appreciate you, we pray for you as I show you each week, I usually have a little picture. And I love my pictures that the scholar and my beautiful bride provide. Um, but as I get into deeper teachings, there are more slides so that it, it gives a better understanding. Uh, a lot of times it's like the visions that it gives to me that I am able to understand. And then when he teaches me, and then I go to do research. Um, so I, I wanted to thank the donors that have made possible the monitor and we're using a camera that is uh, is actually an iPhone 12 and then the, the laptop uh, it's all been made possible by you and we're, we're just thankful for it and we appreciate it so get ready today <laughs> for a lot of notes and those that want to contact us with prayer, we are so thankful and humbled to uh, receive your prayer request. There's nothing too small, there's nothing too great that we read each and every one of them. Uh, we believe that if you take the time to put a stamp on an envelope and scribble out, write out, type out, that it shows that degree of faith on your time, on your part, and, and also the time it takes in such a like a microwave society that we have today. So thank you for taking the time and, and sending into us. And so many that uh, contact us and send little pictures to us. We are, for Kimberly and Luke and I, we are just thankful. Uh, I, that's the part of reaching out to you that I didn't have in the cave. And I, I appreciate that. It's, it's like I said, it really is humbling. Uh, and for an introvert to get out, um, we'll see how today goes. It's different. I'm going to stick to my notes the best I can, so I'll probably be looking down a little bit more than I normally do, but because we're going to get into the Hebrew. So I also wanted to um, thank our uh, the veterans, those that have served. We, we love our veterans. And those that are still on active duty, Many of you have uh, children or a spouse that are on active duty, and we, we think of, of that uh, in our prayer time, uh, those in law enforcement. And then uh, for myself, you know, I, I served in, in the Marine Corps, and, um, and sadly, a member of a Gold Star family with my oldest brother who uh, gave and made the ultimate sacrifice in Vietnam said many times my mom the, the car the Cherokee I always say the, the, the day that she got the news about Sonny uh, part of her died and, and she never was the same after that uh, still the Cherokee but there's a part of her as her firstborn uh, uh, was no longer here so I, I did want to uh, thank those in, in the military so many wounded warriors. Today I'm going to do the best I can to teach um, with a lot of illustrations the way he does me. And we'll talk a little bit about Hebrew uh, in the Torah, the Pentateuch, the creation. Why did our father, your father, my father, why did he create the world? 
there's always a purpose with Elohim, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, when he uh, performs uh, creation, uh, does miracles, and those types of things that are so beyond what the mind can conceive, and yet it's in the spirit. As I said, we have that soul, that spirit that is eternal. So today I'm going to break down uh, from Genesis the Hebrew aspect of it. Like I said, I'll try to stick uh, to my notes as best I can and not venture off sometimes the way I do. So the Torah, um, my laptop is in this area and then I know that you're there, so I'll try to keep my eyes on you, but also look at the laptop that you're able to see hopefully on the monitor, the Torah, the five books of Moses, the, the Pentateuch, <clears throat> and you can see the five books. In Hebrew is, I study the Pentateuch in the original language and then translate it either into Greek or uh, best translation, sometimes Latin, Aramaic. So the Torah is what I will look at today at the beginning because Genesis is where we'll be looking at. But for those that Messianic Jews and for those like you and me, and my bride and son, that follow the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ. I don't want to say it over too many times, I'll stumble over it and probably get it wrong, but I know that there's so many of my Messianic Jewish rabbi friends that they speak of Yeshua HaMashiach. Ruach, uh, HaKadesh is what we'll talk about today, the Holy Spirit. So let me start on for the Hebrew. I, I will begin with Genesis 1-1, which is the first word in Genesis. And for my Bereans, you'll have a lot of notes today. And I, I hope and pray that those that want deeper teachings and understandings, the meat of the word, it's not just so that you'll have knowledge which is good because knowing Jesus Christ, who is the word, is knowledge. But the Bible says perilous days are ahead. I didn't say that, although prophetically he's given me insight in, into some of the things taking place in the future. He said perilous days are ahead. And it will take knowing the word of God. Think of COVID when so many were isolated, they were no longer able to attend an assembly of some type. They were on their own. Some went to the internet and some were able to look at other platforms and get messages from them, but it's very difficult to find someone that is going to teach the meat of the word. And I'm not talking about soothing things and those that never mentioned the word Jesus Christ. The word sin or trespass is not in their vocabulary. And we certainly don't hear them mention Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. I will tell you at the end of this, probably part one, why he is so eager for me to teach this and why he has stopped what I was gonna do and asked me to dwell in this area, especially why he created the world and of the Holy Spirit. So let's see with that. Genesis 1, 1, 2. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and an empty waste, and darkness was on the face of the very deep, upon the face of the very deep. The Spirit of God was brooding, that word is brooding, hovering, you'll hear about it, over the face of the water. So different translations. We're gonna come back to that, but let me jump to John, New Testament, to confirm Old Testament with New Testament. The New Testament is a confirmation and fulfillment of prophetic word of the Old Testament. So look at John 1, 1 and 3, and then we'll look at John 17, chapter 17, verse 5. John 1 and 1 and 3 is, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, talking about Jesus, made without him nothing was made that was made so it says it was in him and without him nothing was made that was made 
talking about both physical and spiritual. And I've told you in the past, spiritual first and then physical. So look at John 17, 5. And I'll point out two areas in these scriptures. And now, O Father, this is Jesus, glorify me together with yourself with the glory I had with you before the world was. So what John is saying, in the beginning was the Word, and there was nothing without the Word, without Jesus, and Jesus is saying, glorify me with the same glory I had with you before there was a world. So we see that Jesus, uh, the Messiah, the Christ, was with the Father, part of the Father, the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in the beginning, before there ever was a world. So let's go back to Genesis 1 and see in Hebrew, in the language Hebrew, what was our Father's purpose in creating the world? I hope, <laughs> I think, you know, I, I find everything that he teaches me of interest. I, I hope and pray that you find this of not only interest, but beneficial as well. Everything that I have said in the past and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing it has to glorify Jesus Christ. Uh, he was, he died and was resurrected. He's alive forevermore, Jesus. So everything points to our Messiah, our shepherd, our friend, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so I'm going to, this is the, the next part is the Hebrew, the uh, Hebrew alphabet. I get my finger off that so I don't, move it all around. The Hebrew alphabet, I wanted to explain it a couple things first. Why is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, B-E-I-T, bet, instead of the first letter, A-L-E-P-H, A-L-E-P-H. So the letter B or bet is associated with blessings. Whereas the first letter of the alphabet, which I had spelled A-L-E-P-H, can be associated with a curse. So they, they didn't want to start off with a curse, so they started off with the letter bet. And I will show that to you so that we can uh, move into that and I'll explain a little bit more of the Hebrew. So be patient and I'm trying to teach you something that may not be out there that is very important as we move forward, not only now, but in the next few months, and Lord willing, if he allows me to teach over uh, this year, this finish out the year. So the word is actually pronounced Beersheet in Hebrew. That word Beersheet, that's in Hebrew. In English, you can translate that as in the beginning of, and I'll go back to my notes. When the Hebrew Torah is printed, there are 17 occasions, and you'll see how large that first letter is. It's an enlarged letter. It says that when a letter is printed either larger or smaller than the surrounding letters, Hebrew doesn't have an upper or lower case. So keep that in mind. If you see something written in the Hebrew language and there's a larger letter, they do not have upper or lower case. And this is not just a printer's trick. Uh, this occurs in the first word, Bershit, which means in the beginning of. <clears throat> so in the first book, uh, I said that they wanted to start off in a, uh, with a blessing, and that's what Genesis is, is a blessing for the world. If you look at Proverbs 3, 17, it states, His ways are ways of pleasantness, and all his paths are peace. This was from a rabbi uh, that I studied, Rabbi Jacob, and that's what he had said. He said, if you look at Proverbs and you'll see that is the pleasantness and the blessing that we start off in Hebrew. So you can see the larger word, the Breshit, that larger letter, meaning um, in the beginning of. So that's the letter. Each of the Hebrew letters, and I'll get more into that, uh, presents a pictogram for someone reading. If you were to say, like Thanksgiving, images of, of Thanksgiving come to your mind. If you were to say Christmas, images come into your mind. And in other holidays, maybe summer or snow skiing, you have an image. It's the same way in, in the language uh, for the uh, Hebrews, uh, the Jewish uh, people, the language. 
is it presents a picture for them, each letter and then each word. So that's what we're looking at today. So the first one is in the beginning. The second is you will see, and it's on the slide, <clears throat> word bar. If you take the combination of bar and versheet, that combination, I'll make sure I stick to this, uh, the meaning of a letter uh, is house or tent and family as well as in, outside, or within the family, they reside within this tent. Actually, tabernacle is where we get the word tabernacle. So that second, when you combine house with the word resheet, you get a different translation. So the meaning of this letter is house or tabernacle. So the purpose of the creation in God he wanted a house or a dwelling place. He wanted a tabernacle. The Midrash, which is another area that I study, uh, when the first and second letters in Hebrew are combined, it is an Aramaic word for son. So when those are combined, the Rashid and the translation for house, tabernacle. Midrash is expansive Jewish biblical uh, clarification using a rabbinic mode of interpretation prominent in the Talmud, T-A-L-M-U-D. That's another area of study. The word itself means textual interpretation or study derived from the root verb derash, D-A-R-A-S-H, which means resort to, seek, seek with care, inquire, or require, forms of which appear frequently in the Hebrew Bible. So hopefully you understand that piece of it. When the two are combined, it forms a picture completely. So when these two are combined, house and in the beginning, that word means son. So we learn the purpose of creation was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your father and my father, my bride and Luke. His purpose was to create a house or a dwelling place or tabernacle. For his son and we know who that is Yeshua these will have there there'll be a lot of those and these will have the URL for some of the Hebrew in it and I'll have Greg post these to uh, the member section on the National War Council uh, I think they're like 30 something pages I'm not gonna cover all that today so let's look at the only begotten son and the tabernacle for a second in first Chronicles 648 their brethren, the Levites, were appointed for all the service of the tabernacle. So where we get that word tabernacle? I could go into a deeper study of tabernacle. I could go into a deeper study in those areas, but I'm just skimming the surface so that I can show you the part of what uh, the Lord wants to point out about Jesus in the beginning, but also with the Holy Spirit. That word, uh, mishka, is the word for house, M-I-S-H, K-A-N, that's Hebrew, 4908. And you know that I refer you to the Strong's Concordance. So that's the Hebrew word for it is Mishka, which is tabernacle. And that's what the word said. The service of the Mishka, or we say tabernacle. Look at Exodus 25, 8 through 9. Having them construct a sanctuary for me so that I may dwell, there's that word dwell, among them. That word dwell is tabernacle according to all that I'm going to show you as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all this furniture so you shall construct it so I covered this once before but I'll quickly cover that dwell is that word inhabit live or living so when he dwells you remember I said in, in Jesus in the word and I believe I'll come to that that he tabernacled among us the Hebrew 8.5 is, look at Hebrews 8.5, and we'll uh, show you what Paul said about this. Who serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things, just as Moses was warned by God when he was about to erect the tabernacle, or the sacred tent is what they call it at that time. For see, he says, talking about Jehovah, that you make all things by the pattern. That word pattern is actually blueprint. 
which were shown to you on the mountain. So the Lord is saying, make sure you abide by the blueprint, talking to Moses, that I showed you on the mountain. And this is Paul in Hebrews referring back to that Old Testament, New Testament confirmation. Look at Revelation 21, 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among the people, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. And there's that word again, he will dwell with them and tabernacle. So it's made after the pattern of the heavenly tabernacle. It's a, the one on earth is a shadow of the original. And that's what the uh, angelic uh, describe when they talk about the tabernacle of God in heaven, there's a tabernacle, there's a heavenly Sanhedrin, and there is a foreshadowing of that on earth with Moses started. And I'll show you, you can see uh, that we started with a tabernacle uh, with Moses. Uh, the top is the tabernacle of, or the temple of Solomon. And below that is the uh, temple of Herod, the three that were there. So Moses folded up his tabernacle. And then you know that David had the pattern given to him when he built uh, or had his son Solomon. He wanted to, but uh, the Holy Spirit said, you have too much blood on your hands. So Solomon built the temple. Then we know that Herod did. So Yahweh, the God of Israel, wanted a dwelling place for Yeshua. Look at John 1.14. This is the word I was talking about a little bit earlier. And the word, I mean the word of truth, became flesh and dwelt. There's that word dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as of the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. So that word in Greek, not the Hebrew, but the Greek word is 4637 for dwell. Dwell is 4637. It means to fix one's tabernacle have one's tabernacle to abide or to live in a tabernacle among them. So that's what John was saying and the word became flesh and tabernacle. We're talking about Jesus. So he was in that temporary body. We are in a temporary body and I'll talk about that another time. I don't think it's in this one. It may be, but I'll see. First uh, Timothy 3, uh, 16, beyond question, great is the mystery of godliness. He who was revealed in the flesh was vindicated, that word vindicated is justified, in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. Talking about Jesus, so that we know that that is the word that John is talking about, confirming again Old Testament, Old Testament, New Testament. So in future teachings, uh, we will reaffirm our bodies or the temple, that's why I said uh, the tabernacle, of the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I had said, uh, look at John 17, 20, 21, and this was Jesus. I am not asking on behalf of these alone. So he's talking about you and me in his prayers. Uh, he was there with his disciples, but he was talking to his Father about future generations, and he was talking about you, and he's talking about me. So I'm not asking on these alone but also on those who believe in me through their word. So the sacred scriptures, that they may be one, this is pretty key, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, that they also may be in us so that the world, the secular realm, may continually believe, that's a verb, continually, action, that you sent me. So he's talking about body, soul, and spirit, that when he says Jesus is asking the Father, as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, to those that believe in me, part of the new covenant through the blood, I want them to be one with us. And so when you receive the Holy Spirit, you are one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in this realm, in this body. I'll teach further on what that will look like. And, and you know that the word says in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Uh, mortality shall take on immortality. Well, that's talking about body because your soul is already immortal. 
in the spirit, I'll talk about different small s that we have. Every living thing has the small s. Uh, if you breathe, uh, if animals breathe, they have the small s of the, the rock, the, the spirit of uh, the Father. So the Creator, and we'll cover uh, the Hebrew in just a minute on this. John 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We covered this just a minute ago. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. Again, the Word was in the beginning. The Word was with the disciples that tabernacled among them. And when we ask for the Holy Spirit to come into us, the Word comes into us, and he says, I will send you the Spirit of truth, and the Spirit of truth will remind you of the things that I have taught you. And it will also show you things that are to take place in the future. That's God created man and all other things through Jesus Christ. And we read that, all things through him. The Savior is called the Word that was in the beginning, was with God, was and is God, and is the creator because all things came into being through him without exception. I don't know if that fits into your thinking or if that fits into your doctrine. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and all things, the Father, through Jesus Christ, everything that is created, the Word of God is saying, everything that we know was created in and through Jesus. It says without that, there would be no creation. That is not what, uh, for today, the Jewish people and the Orthodox uh, believe because they're still looking for their Messiah. We know, we believe, and I believe, that our Messiah, uh, <laughs> Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Christ is the Anointed One, has come. And he is the one that will be worthy to open the scrolls that I had covered before. The Apostle John wrote about the Word being in the beginning, and I covered that at John 1, 14 through 17, that Jesus tabernacled among us. We have received grace upon grace, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth were realized. That truth is a prolonged verb, uh, Greek 1096, which means continuously believing in Jesus Christ. Look at John 1, 14 through 17. So in him all the fullness of the deity dwells. When Christians from the city of Colossus, C-O-L-O-S-S-E, became fascinated, I'm sorry, fascinated with philosophy and began questioning the nature of the Lord Jesus, the apostle wrote, Colossians 2, 8 through 9. He wrote it to those in Colossus. They started, uh, they were carried away with myths, uh, legends, uh, some Greek mythology, uh, Zeus and Poseidon and, and others like that. So he said, quoting, Verse 8 and 9, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy. We have a lot of philosophers today. And empty deception. Sadly, it's pre prevalent today. According to the tradition of men, according to the elementary principles of this world, rather than according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form. The NASB translation. So look at that again, Colossians 2, 8 through 9, that do not fall for the myths, do not fall for the deception of men, do not fall for how they are trying to change the words today and adjust it to society. Uh, the Lord doesn't adjust to society. Society has to adjust to him. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And his word is his word. He doesn't change it to meet circumstances or situations. And in Jesus Christ, the Word of God, I didn't come up with this, I just believe it because it's in the Word. The Word says, the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Jesus bodily. And that was Colossians 2, 8 through 9. Scripture teaches us that Jesus dwells in bodily form in the fullness of the Godhead. 
So one of the things that I had wanted to teach on is when I had taught a while back on the word for uh, ruach was a feminine uh, noun in Hebrew, it probably shook people's doctrine and you know, challenged it because it did me. The first time I, years ago, started studying this, I had no idea. I am not saying that the Holy Spirit is a woman. I'm saying that the Holy Spirit, as well as Father and Son, and I'll show this through you in, in the Hebrew, that the Father and Son, when he created man and woman, we're going to get into that, the different attributes that are there. So rather than just saying something and asking you to take my word for it, especially if it challenges doctrine or challenges your thinking, rather than the reaction people give without having knowledge, or they're reacting because they heard it from so-and-so or they heard it from another person, I'm going to take the time to show you in the truth and in the word, in the um, uh, Torah, where that is translated also into, into the Greek, but especially with the creation of man and woman. So if you look at Genesis 1, 26 through 27, then God said, let us, plural, Make mankind in our image, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and the livestock and over all the earth and over every crawling thing that crawls on the earth. Verse 27. For God, Elohim, created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So that's Genesis 1, 26 through 7, 27. So the word God, then God said, the word God is Hebrew 430, is Elohim. So look at the word, that's the creator word for God the Father, Elohim. Let us, in the word, in, let us, indicating united action, not a request. So he was saying, what the Christ, it was just, we're going to do this, and the you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, created the Hebrew 1254, Bara, B-A-W-R-A-W, -A -A out of nothing. This creation is out of nothing. It is not used here because God is forming man out of something that he had already created. So he had already created the earth, the ground, the dirt the dust of the ground he had already created it. So formed here means out of something, but it is was still something that only God could do. So what it's saying in the Hebrew is, although he started with something that he had already created, it's not a new creation, and we'll talk about that in the future, about new creation from nothing. This is the creation from something that he had already created, and we knew that, we know that in the first six days, that the earth it was created and the dust. So when he, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, created man and woman in his image, that he took it from the dust. Genesis uh, 2, 7. Then the Lord formed, the Lord God formed, the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living person. The word person is actually translate to soul. And then talking about Adam when he created that and the body was there, uh, that he breathed into his nostrils. And I have a little bit more on that. Uh, it said the word formed, Hebrew 3335. So if you want to jot that down, Y-A-T-Z-A, Yatza, means to mold or shape by design, to mold into a form, especially a potter. So that's that word forming. So it is like a clay potter, potter shaping his clay. And look at Samuel, 1 Samuel 17, 28, Isaiah 29, 16, Jeremiah 18, 1 through 17, talking about a potter. There's also a goldsmith who makes idols, how they form something. Isaiah 44, 9, Habakkuk 2, 18. The shaping of the Messiah's body in the womb, the 
shaping of the Messiah's body in the womb. Isaiah 49, 5. And the things formed by Elohim. Again, that word Elohim, the creator. Psalms 33, 15. 94, 9. And 119, 73. I'm giving you these to jot down. Uh, if you need to, to go back and, and look uh, at the video. And you can take notes. For those that are just eager to learn desirous to know these are the building blocks that are going to help all of us and this is the way he taught me uh, versus if you just want to hear a quick word and leave and, and you, you got that box checked that's, that, that's, that's really not helping yourself uh, when difficulties come uh, you need to know the word and the word is Jesus the comfort of the Holy Spirit so I, I'm taking the time to set a foundation in the Word, going to Hebrew and also to count uh, to uh, Greek. So Elohim formed the man Adam from the dust of the ground, and that dust is H125. The Hebrew text displays a beautiful pun in this verse. In English, it would be something like God formed the earthling out of the earth. The pun reminds us that our origins are earthly. The Rabbi Shaul says, another rabbi, S-H-A-U-L, rabbi. The first man was of the dust earth. He was earthly man. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 47-48. The Bible compares us to the earthly substance of clay many times. Job 4.19. Look at chapter 19, 8-9. Chapter 33, verse 6, Isaiah 41, 25, and look at Isaiah 45, 9. Same with Jeremiah 18, 4 through 6, Romans 9, 21, and 2 Corinthians 4 through 7. I'm providing many scriptures so that you can see the teaching that he gives to me is based on him, the Word, and he provides scripture of himself and I go back and research and look at that to show myself approved by being a diligent student of the word the emphasis here is the humble origin of man formed out of the ground you and me the rabbis teach that the dust was collected from all parts of the world as a result some dust was collected from the future site of the altar for God said, make an altar of the earth for me. Exodus 20, 24. <laughs> it's like, you know, I find everything interesting. That, that the rabbis teach that dust came from all over the world. And part of that they attribute to where the altar would eventually be. So when God said, make the altar of the dust, look at Exodus 20, 24. Because the Hebrew word for ground, A-D-A-M-A-H, in Genesis 2, 7, and earth, A-D-A-M-A-H, and Exodus 2024 20, are the same in the Hebrew text. They say it symbolizes that the altar would make atonement for man's sins. Um, you think of the altar in the tabernacle, and I, I'm looking forward to teaching on uh, the altar of sacrifice. I've talked a little bit about the, the bronze uh, labor, the water part made of mirrors that the, the ladies of Israel was made of their mirrors, bronze mirrors and then the, the base of it which represents judgment of the base of it and, and 12 bulls so Genesis 2 7 and I'll read this and I'm trying to be very careful and diligent also teaches us that man's nature is both physical and spiritual God not only formed the man from the dust of the earth he also breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We read that. Elua, E L I H U, you remember he was only probably about 80 or 90, but it says that the young upstart in the book of Job said this The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of Shaddai, El Shaddai, which is God Almighty, gives me life. Job 33, 4. 
since it is God's breath and spirit, big S, that gives us life. If he were to withdraw his life-giving power from us all, mankind would perish together and man would return to the dust. Job 34, 15. I said I was going to stay to my notes because I want to get them right. Abraham said that apart from God, we are nothing but dust and ashes. Genesis 18, 27. But the Lord took the likeness body of the man and breathed his breath into his lungs, which designates the man from all other creatures. We are much more than a God-shaped piece of earth. We have within us the gift of life, which is a gift from Elohim himself. The young upstart called him uh, El Shaddai. The act of breathing life into Adam has the face-to-face -face intimacy of a kiss and portrays the personal intimacy of the relationship between God, our Father, and us, between you, between me. We were created with a capacity for serving and fellowshipping with our Father, with the Holy Spirit, and certainly through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It was only when both of the actions were completed that man became a living being. And that word is nephesh, N-E-P-H-E-S-H, -E Hebrews 53:15. Literally a living soul. As I said, that word is Translated, put person, but it's a living soul. Adam needed to be energized. His breathing needed to be activated. His heart needed to start pumping and so on. So you can picture that Adam, the creation, had been created and would have been fully functional, but it was not until the Lord breathed into his nostrils and it says, don't misconstrue my words it was like the intimacy of a kiss meaning just the tender loving mercies and care of our father for each one of us but the Lord took the lifeless body of the man and breathed his breath into his lungs which distinguishes the man from all other creatures it says we are much more than a piece of earth we have within us the gift of life, which is a gift from Elohim. That intimacy portrays that personal relationship between us. So when both of those actions were complete, Adam needed to be energized. That's when the Holy Spirit came upon him. It refers to the consciousness of when this happens. It refers to the consciousness of the mind and emotions. Heart breathing, respiratory system, blood circulation, emotions, and the, and the mind. So man's uniqueness does not rely on the breath of life itself because the same is said of animals. I'll talk about that in just a second. Man's uniqueness lies in the fact that he was made in the image of God. We talked about that, Genesis 1.27. And the animals were not. This was not a long, drawn-out evolutionary process. Please understand that. This was not us crawling out of some goo not evolved from an ape. This was a process that when the Lord spoke, it happened. Because Adam was not a living soul until Elohim breathed into his nostrils. And I'll read just a second. Uh, in Corinthians, going to the New Testament. So, Darwinism, you, know, well, you want to believe in Darwinism? You can. I know that our Father created you and me, male and female, in his image, when he breathed into us. Animals, <laughs> like my miniature snails, or every time I think about it, I almost weep. I'd love to get a picture of, of, of her. She's, she's something else. Uh, animals have the same breath in them. Humans have breath. Animals have breath. If you breathe, that breath came from the Spirit of God, the Spirit of life. So let's look at 1 uh, Corinthians 15, 42, 49, and I'll try to move a little further on this. So also it is in the resurrection of the dead. Verse 15. It is sown a perishable body, corruption. It is raised an imperishable body, incorruption. 
So it's raised an imperishable body, sown in corruption, but it's raised an imperishable body. It means mortal versus immortality. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. And if there is a natural body, then there is a spiritual body. Verse 45. So also it is written, the first man, Adam, that's who we're talking about, became a living soul. The last Adam was a life-giving spirit. That word spirit is a small s. However, the spirit is not first, but the natural, the spiritual. The first man in the earth earthly the second man is from heaven verse 48 as is the earthly one so also are those who are earthly and as is the heavenly one about Jesus so are those who are heavenly that's you and I just as we have been born in the image of the earthly we will also bear the image of the heavenly so look at 1 Corinthians 15 42 to 49 when referring to the value of human life, God refers to the fact that man, men and women, are in his image. Remember the first, said God created male and female in his image. I didn't come up with that. That is in the original Hebrew text. Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made man. In the image of God, you shed someone's blood and you kill them. God is saying that person, male or female, has been made in my image. Animals, as much, I love animals. And I could tell you some funny stories with the Lord and I with animals. <laughs> he has a he has sense of humor is something else, but that's another time. Um, but that's what he says when, when in Genesis Old Testament look at the passage from uh, the epistle of Ephesians tells us the phrase image of God uh, refers primarily to the spiritual aspect of man so when you are thinking of that look at now we go to the New Testament look at Ephesians 4 20 through 24 but you did not learn Christ in the way if indeed you have heard him or have been taught by him. You did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you will be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, which has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. That's the New American Standard Bible, NASB. So look at Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. They're saying you do not learn this carnally, that Christ in this way, if you heard, this is the teaching, you've been taught in him, just as in Jesus, the reference was made to your former life, that you lay aside the old self, the carnal self, the flesh, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit. You know, the three areas of sin is lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Again, mind is not your brain. Mind is represented by the holy place. The holy place of the soul. The mind, the will, and the emotions. The renewing of your mind. Not the renewing of your brain renewing of your mind and this brain as amazing as fearfully and wonderfully made will from the dust return to the dust it's uh, mortal our soul is eternal and so when we leave this body and are with the Lord Jesus Christ then it is our eternal soul so understand that the renewing of your mind is in your soul what he's talking about spirit and we are made in the image of the father spirit father son holy spirit so let me talk about for just a minute how god created man 
All I'm saying is, is I'm not a medical, I'm not a scientist, and I have both that watch me. Thank you for the grace. <laughs> I'm doing the best I know to cover a truth of the word, and it will have, especially in the notes, you'll have URLs for uh, different uh, terms for, uh, we'll talk about DNA and chromosomes, and you can see from the picture he created male and female, and that was from scripture. I didn't make that up or put it up there. And you can see the male uh, DNA and, and the female DNA, and I'll show you more of that. So again, let me say this one more time before I, I go into it. Genesis 1, 26 through 27, so that you don't write me, and so give me your, I don't want any doctrines. I don't care about doctrines. I don't care traditions of what you've been taught in your church. I care of what the Word of God says from the Hebrew and the Old Testament and the Greek and the New Testament. So I look at those as my compass, as my truth, and not on what somebody has taught because they could have gotten it wrong, even though it was well intended, it can still be wrong. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness, and let us rule over the fish of the sea. And verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. So that's what I have to pick. Uh, look at, uh, you can see this picture of a house structure. And I put it there because I'm going to be quoting a URL that I found was very interesting. It was a word from a um, teacher, uh, professor, that a student had asked, and he answered it, and I, I wanted to uh, show you that as an example, and we'll talk about the construction. Um, you can see the male DNA compared to the female, and that is um, the left and the right, but I have more details that you can see. So male DNA and the female DNA. And you will see the picture of the DNA, the DNA double helix, and I'll, let me get in, into that just a little bit. I'm gonna move over to a frame and then come back to it. You can see the difference in the chromosomes of the male and the female. And this is probably where I will try to stop today. But let's get through this piece. So a high school student from Kansas asked, if men and women both have the same genes, how is it that men get traits that women do not? So that was a fair question. I, I think years ago, I, you know, I don't know what it was. I, I, I had read a book, Men from Mars and Women or from Venus or something like that, and someone had given it to me, I think at work as a, I don't know, some type of, I think they just left it on my desk and I read it. And, I got, you know, kind of tickled at it. but So let me go through this article then. I'm not going to go through all the scientific terms. As I said, this will be in the URL. I'll probably post it after next week because there's some details that I want to go through. So it's not quite right to say that men and women have exactly the same genes. Why am I teaching on this? When he created male and female, and I'm going to talk about the creation because male and female are created in the image of God spiritually, and they are also in the image of God. Think of Jesus when he has DNA and Mary. The DNA of Jesus was from the Father. He said the, over, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, Mary. So I will cover that. I believe it's in here. So it's not you know, really quite right to say they're equal. Men have several dozen genes that women do not. If these few genes that cause someone to become biologically male, but they do not work by themselves, talking about the genes, a small number of genetic differences helps to set off a cascading chain of events. They cause different steroid hormones to be made. Those hormones turn out other genes, G-E-N-E-S, genes. That means a relatively small genetic difference can make a substantial impact you were biologically born male and you are biologically born female, I do not leave, not, not in the notes. Your soul, I'll stop and go through this. Your soul in you, 
if you were to take your soul outside your body and put it beside you, your soul is an exact replica of what your body looks like without the clothes. So think of it in those terms that your soul, which is eternal, is arms, legs, everything is whole. When your soul is of its own, it has, think of Adam and Eve before the fall and they had a glow. So I'll try to get more into that next time. But think of it as um, the soul is eternal. And you know, people that have like a, a leg missing, uh, you know, maybe a wounded warrior or something, and they have said, it feels like I can still feel some type of tingling or something in my leg, but there's no leg there. Your soul is intact. It never loses a limb. Its sight is perfect. Its ears are perfect. So the soul that is in you, people, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach on this, they have a little circle that says the soul. The soul is not some little circle inside you. The soul is, is a complete you. So that when this physical body goes to the earth, and the soul is is taken to heaven. The soul is you, and when you, if you have it, if the Lord allows you or, or shows you in heaven, that's why you see complete people. There's no glasses, there's no hearing aids, and dress and things. I'll, I'll talk about another time. So let me finish this one piece and uh, try to close it up with prayer. So those small number of genetic differences help set off a cascading chain of events. These genes can do so much by essentially changing how many of the rest of the genes get used. This change called gene expression pattern, the gene expression pattern is one of the big reasons men and women have different traits. It is also why hormone therapies are so effective getting artificial hormones affects a lot of different genes, G-E-N-E-S, which can have widespread effects. So you know that those that are, are, take hormone treatment and those. So let me, that's a lot of information and I will get into more of the Hebrew and pictograms uh, next broadcast. But I wanted to touch on this and show you the in-depth teaching that he does from Genesis all the way through and the scientific aspect of it, the medical aspect of it, which is more and more every year, along with archeology, span are proven that the word of God is truth. And we believe that without all the others, they're just now catching up in science. So what I wanted to uh, say is the reason that he has me teaching so in depth, and we'll get into the Ruach, uh, Hekadesh, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, next time, is think of, and, and I'll point to um, Azusa Street, uh, to Reverend Seymour, and to uh, Ann McPherson, to Billy Sunday, and then especially uh, for my bride and I, uh, Catherine Coolman. Uh, the miracles and the healing ministries, you're wanting those, I'm wanting those so much today, but unless we know Holy Spirit and understand Holy Spirit and seek Holy Spirit the way they did is the only way that we're going, not, I don't want to say the only way, going to do anything he wants. But as I have seen and as he put on my heart, we have to begin to understand the Holy Spirit and bring Holy Spirit back today to where people feel comfortable, they're in love with Holy Spirit, they understand Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit does the work so that Jesus Christ is glorified. And when he is glorified, the Father is glorified. So I'll leave it at that and see your thoughts on uh, part one and we'll go to part two but let me pray real quick Father we thank you we ask that you know, this is a teaching that it's, it's a deep teaching Lord it, it's meat and I pray that they have hungry hearts you told me they did and many are, are seeking the word of God and we need it with perilous times coming with dark times coming and so many times they can be isolated or cut off from uh, the source of teaching. And so I pray that Holy Spirit, Father, would touch them and teach them in their heart so that 
they're able to grow and mature and understand and, and to have knowledge. Uh, there's a knowledge of, you said, without knowledge of people perish, without wisdom. Well, that, that is of salvation, but also knowing Jesus Christ as who he is. So, Father, thank you for this day, and, and I look forward to you allowing me to teach again uh, when uh, I can do the next broadcast. So, Father, thank you. Um, we pray for you. And we pray for your families, and we pray for the great evil. And today, we'll see how the monitor and the laptop and all went. But thank you for allowing me this time. God bless, and I'll, I'll see you on the next broadcast.